chapter number 12, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12. We're going to start reading in verse 7 this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter number 12, reading from verse 7. Once you have found it, would you stand with me as we read God's Word this morning, 2 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 7. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. If you have it, give me a good strong amen. Yeah. Scripture says in verse 7, And lest I should be exalted above measure through the abundance of the revelations, there was given to me a thorn in the flesh, the messenger of Satan to buffet me, lest I should be exalted above measure. Amen. For this thing I besought the Lord thrice, that it might depart from me. And he said unto me, My grace is sufficient for thee. For my strength is made perfect in what? Weakness. Most gladly, therefore, will I rather glory in my infirmities, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Therefore, this is interesting, therefore I take pleasure in infirmities, in reproaches, in necessities, in persecutions, in distresses, for Christ's sake. For when I am weak, then am I strong. Amen. I want to take these verses, and I just, I don't plan on being real lengthy this morning, but I want to be helpful this morning. I want to talk to you about the sufficiency of grace. Amen. The sufficiency of grace. Father, I look across the auditorium this morning. One thing I see often, people carrying heavy burdens. Now I know that there's a reason for that being there. We don't always understand it, but it's there. And so we come to thee this morning, come to thy word, asking for answers, needing answers. We don't always understand. But I know that you said that your grace is sufficient. That's all we need. Now, God, I'm asking you right now, may you allow me to be a help to thy people, please. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. There are two types of people in our church today, or if I could even put it this way, in this room today. There's some who have heavy burdens, and that heavy burden has made them bitter. There are others who have heavy burdens, but they have found joy in that heavy burden. I could go through our auditorium this morning, and I could point out people who are carrying very heavy burdens. I think of one sitting in here right now just been diagnosed with cancer. Doesn't know yet what the doctors are going to do but carrying cancer and they're here this morning. And I'm thankful that they're here. There are some here this morning, they've got surgery this week. They're hoping the surgery helps them with their problem. But they don't know. Carrying heavy burdens. There are some here this morning that they've got children who are incarcerated. And every time they go to see their child, they see a child who's incarcerated. They're carrying heavy burdens. There are some here this morning that they've lost a loved one. Not the way they think it should have been and probably and wasn't the way they should have gone. And yet they carry that burden and they're here. Every service, they're carrying, people are carrying burdens this morning. There are ladies here this morning that have lost their husband. They never thought they would, they, they didn't dream, they knew that day might come, but they never dreamed it would come. But now they sit at home at nighttime by themselves. Look at the empty seat. They see the empty side of the bed where the husband used to sleep. They carry the heartache every day. Some would never know they carry that heartache. Some think they got over it, but I don't know that you ever get over losing your spouse 
that you've loved and lived with all those years carrying heavy burdens. There are some here this morning struggling financially. You don't know how you're going to pay your bills. The bills keep coming in. The bills just keep on coming at you carrying heavy burdens this morning. I look at some here today. You're about ready to lose your house. You don't know where you're going to get the finances to find another place. You're, you're, you're about ready to face the, the streets. You're about ready to be homeless. Not sure what you're going to do facing heavy burdens this morning. Some are trying to find a job in here this morning. I'm talking people that are coming to my mind right now as I say each one of these things. Some, are they're, 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 they don't have a job. They're trying to find a job and for some reason it just doesn't seem to be coming their way facing heavy burdens burdens. There are some today they carry disease in their body that is crippling their body a little bit at a time yet they keep on going with the smile on their face with the joy in their soul carry a heavy burden I'm saying people are carrying heavy burdens this morning some of you you're facing mental decline and you're nervous of maybe you're you're nervous of dementia you're nervous of Alzheimer's and you're nervous about what's going on and you're carrying the burden of what am I going to do there are some you're aged and you know your strength is not what it used to be. Your stability is not what it used to be. You're not, you're not afraid of stepping onto heaven, but we don't want to take the bus that's going to take us to heaven. We know that that could be heartache. That could be sorrow. And we stand here today saying, I carry heavy burdens. God, what is the answer for these burdens? Now, with all these people and many more that are carrying heavy burdens, can I say two types of people today some are here, you're angry at God. You're bitter at God. You're asking God, why did you do this to me? God, why did you not come in and intervene? God, why did you not step in and help me? God, where are you, God? God, I called on you. God, I'm serving you. God, I go to church. God, I pay my tithes. And God, I've been faithful all these years and you didn't answer this request. God, where are you right now? There's some that sit there bitter at God. You're here. You're here. And I'm glad that you're here. But you're angry at God. God. You're bitter at God right now. You're saying, God, you should have stepped in. You're like that Mary and Martha who came to God and said, God, if you had been here when my brother was sick, he would not have died. And that's how you feel inside your heart. You feel like God left you. You feel like God left you on an island. You feel like, where is God right now? Why is God not helping me right now? There's that crowd that is here this morning, bitter, angry at God. There's another crowd here this morning, and I think this is probably the majority of the crowd, carrying heavy burdens, but you'd never know it. People look at these people and feel like they have no burdens to carry. They got a smile on their face. They got laughter in their soul. They sing the songs of Zion with joy. They think of their loved ones. They think of their burdens and say, thank God, I've got a God who's with me on this day. There are some that just, you carry that burden every day. You wake up, you face that burden. I'm not talking about your husband or wife. I'm talking about something else just in case you thought that. But you wake up every day and you face that burden. You go to bed at night, that burden did not leave. As far as your concerns, you carry that burden Every day. But you made it another day. You made it carrying that burden. You made it carrying that heartache. You made it carrying that load. It's just, it's just you're just two people here today. Some bitter. Some found the way through the hardship. And instead of choosing bitterness, they choose the grace of God. And they said, God's grace is better than the devil's bitterness that he liked to give. Now I want you to notice something about our text verse. Paul, the apostle, he says in verse 7, lest I should be exalted above measure through the revelation, through the abundance of the revelations, he says, God's blessed me. Now let me stop right there. He says, God's blessed me. And he says, if I wasn't careful, he says that blessing would cause me to become arrogant in my own abilities. 
So he said, what God had to do, notice this next phrase, there is given to me a thorn in the flesh. I want you to circle that phrase, there was given to me, and I want you to write this in your Bible, God in my life. God in my life. We don't like to accept that God would give us the thorn in the flesh. But can I remind you what Job said? He said, the, he said, he said, the Lord giveth and the Lord taketh. Blessed be the name of the Lord. He says, God gave this to me, Job said. He says, now, but God's still a good God. That's what Job said. He said, I didn't ask for it, but God, he said, the same God that gave me the good blessings is also the same God that has the right to take those blessings. But he says that God is a good God, whether he's giving or whether he's taking. And sometimes God says, okay, I need to give you a thorn in the flesh, something that reminds you of your humanity, something that reminds you that without God, you could do nothing. Can I tell you, we don't like that thorn. We wake up with that thorn. It's embarrassing. We wake up with that thorn. It's painful. We wake up with that thorn. It hurts. We wake up with that thorn. It causes tears. But thank God for the grace of God. God's still in my life. Doesn't matter what I face today. God's still in my life today. I can be assured of one thing. Cancer may take my strength, but God is still in my life. I may be assured of one thing. My kidneys may not be what I thought they be, and I am nervous what the doctor is going to say, but God is in my life. And we look at life and we say, I, I, I've, I've, I've lost a loved one, and I, and I long for that loved one, and my heart hurts for that loved one. Can I tell you? But God is still in your life. In the midst of heartache, God is still there. In the midst of burdens, God is still there. In the midst of loads, God is still there. Oh, my friend, thank God. He's a God that never leaves us nor forsakes us. In the, in the darkest days of our life, he's the light that is there. He's the light that carries us through darkness. He's the one that lifts the load. Oh, thank God I have a God that's in my life. He may have given me that thorn, but God is in my life. I may have to carry that load, but I don't have to carry it alone. I may walk in darkness, but he's the light that gets me through the darkest of days. Hey, thank God I've got a God who says I'm still there. You go to the jail. And you put your hand on the glass. Nowadays, they don't even let you do that. Nowadays, you got to look at an iPad. And never have the personal touch. And the hug of a loved one. And all you have is just a little screen to look at, kind of in, impersonal. But I'm glad when we're going through those days, there was given to me. God's footprints are right there. His footprints are in my life. You say, but it's a thorn. Yes, but you got to understand. He says that thorn was there. It's a, he says, he says God, God's just trying to keep me humble. Why? Why would he want to keep me humble? What's the good thing about that thorn? Get this now. Pride cometh before destruction. Haughty spirit before a fall. God says, I have to give you that thorn because I don't want you to fall. I have to give you that thorn. I don't want you to become haughty and face destruction. So God says, I got to keep you humble somehow. And God says, sometimes I just got to give you that thorn that you're facing inside your life because if not, we become too boastful about ourselves and we think that I am my own sufficiency. And God says, you're never sufficient without me. You'll fall short without me. So God says, I put inside of your life that thorn that you've not asked for that thorn that you wake up every day and you say God can you remove this thorn you could be like the apostle Paul who asked God three times and God says my grace is sufficient and he said most gladly therefore will I glory or you can be that one on the other side that gets bitter and angry at God and say God why have you done this to me Interesting. Two types of people, both carrying a burden. Now follow me now. But there's two other people. You've got God who gave you that thorn who's in your life. 
Then you have, and then if you continue on the verse, he says, the messenger of who? Of Satan. To what? To buffet me. What does that mean? To harass me. What does that mean? To afflict me. So I've got the choice this morning. I'm one of two people. I'm the one that has a burden, but I choose not to get bitter. But i am also got to have a choice this morning. I can either listen to the voice of God and trust the patience of God who says he'll never leave me nor forsake me, or I can listen to the messenger of Satan who will take that thorn to cause me to become bitter and angry at God and say, God, why? And, yet, and, and say, I'll go live my own life because I can't believe God would let this in my life. And what's Satan done? He's taken that same thorn that was supposed supposed to be the source to keep you humble, to keep the blessings of God on your life. He takes it as a messenger to turn it into bitterness so it can harass you, so it can afflict you the rest of your life and hold you inside the prison. Can I tell you today, hey, hey, okay, we don't like the hardship, but can I tell you, God gives the answer. He says, my grace, my grace is sufficient. Everyone has a thorn. I often do weddings and I see a couple walking out after I've just married them. And, and I watch them walk out happy and joyful and thinking they're going to go live a life happily ever after. And I, and I want that for them, but I also know life is real. And I'll be honest with you, sometimes, Brother Turk, as I watch him walk out, I, I know I shouldn't think this, but I wonder, I say to myself, I wonder how long until heartache hits this couple. Yeah. Yeah. I watch young Christians get saved, follow the Lord in believers' baptism. They're excited and joyful. But in the back of my brain, I wonder when Satan's going to come and try to knock them out. Can't lose your salvation. He's going to try to get them to stop church. Something hearts are going to come, and they're going to get bitter and angry, and they're going to drop out of church, and they're going to say, well, when I get my life together, I'll come back. And they, But you never get your life together by staying out. You get your life together by staying in. You get your life together by staying in God's Word. You get your life together by staying in the prayer life. You get your life together by staying in the church house Sunday morning, Sunday night, and Wednesday night. You get your life together by staying in so winning. You get your life together by staying in the power of the Holy Spirit of God. Hey, that's how you get your life together. Everyone has a thorn. But hold on. This is what I love. Here's the sermon. Everyone has grace. Everyone has grace. God said to the great Apostle Paul, you would think if anybody could get their, store, their thorn removed, you would think Paul could be the one. He's the Apostle Paul. God's used him to pen, pen most of the New Testament. You would think this great apostle had the power in prayer and say, God, remove it, and it'd be gone. But God says, nope, not going to remove it, going to keep it there. You're going to have to deal with it the rest of your life, and it doesn't matter what it is, you're going to have to deal with it. And he did deal with it, but he said, "My," he said, God's grace is sufficient. Can I tell you, the same apostle who said God's grace is sufficient for him, that same God that was sufficient for Paul is still sufficient for you. His grace is sufficient for each one of us can I tell you thank God hey I may have trials but I've got God's grace to help me through those trials you say what is that grace I like to put it this way you know we're in the middle of summer it's hot outside triple digits and I know you all love triple digits You know what grace is? Grace is walking inside the house to an air conditioner. It doesn't remove the heat. But it allows you to weigh to bear the heat. 
of the day. Around here we get, and most of the country doesn't get what we get. When we call rain here, we get rain here. It's not little sprinkles. It's like, it's like God just opens up the whole faucet, the fire faucet, and the whole thing comes down. You know what, you know what God's grace is? It's not stopping the rain. It's giving you an umbrella to keep your hair from being messed up in the rain. Isn't that right, Brother Dion? He's done a good job. That's what grace is. Grace doesn't remove the hardship. Grace is the protection that helps you in the hardship. It's what allows you to bear the hardship. It's that thing that softens. It doesn't, hey, it, it's, the, it's the aspirin to take the headache away. The pain, the cause of the pain is still there, but the aspirin is what takes it away. And God says, okay. He says, my, I'm not going to take it away because you need that to stay humble. But God says, I will give you the wherewithal that you can make it. And God says that way, that what I'm going to give to you is my grace. And he says, my grace is sufficient for thee. What does that mean, sufficient? He says that's all you need is the grace of God to make it through your hardships of life. You don't need drugs. You need God's grace. You don't need alcohol. You need God's grace. Oftentimes when I'm doing a funeral, I long to help the family. I don't know if you understand how much your pastor agonizes. How much I really long to help a family that's just lost a loved one. When every funeral's done, I feel like I failed. Because I, I can't, I, I don't know how to reach inside there, but you know what I often do? One thing I know I can do is I pray. And I say, God, can you somehow let me, let my voice be that voice of grace that can help them through the hard time. I may not be the best pulpiteer. I may not be the best preacher. I may not have the deepest of depths of Scripture that, many, that some may have. But I have a God in heaven who has grace, who can help. In the time of need, when people are hurting, I'm saying God's grace is sufficient for thee. I don't know how I'm going to face the doctor when he tells me the stage of cancer I'm in. But I know that when I, when I hear those words, I know God's grace is right there Amen. to help me. Amen. I don't know what I'll do when the doctor says, you don't have much time to live. But I know God's grace is sufficient Amen. to help you through it. Amen. So instead of letting the hardship kill me, Instead of dying because of the hardship, I choose grace. I choose God's grace. Now get this down. We all have God's grace. Why? For by grace are you saved through faith. So if you're saved, you have grace. You have all the grace you need to make it through your hard time inside of life. You just have to ask God for that grace who says, Ask and it shall be given. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. For every one that asketh receiveth. He that seeketh findeth to him that knocketh. It shall be open. All you have to do is say, God, you're the God that gave your grace to me when I got saved now I need that same grace to face my heartache that same grace to face my turmoil that same grace to go through today I've got to have your grace if I want to make it through today God's saying he says when I give you heartache he says my grace is sufficient what does that mean sufficient he says I've given you enough to make it through today now, now follow me very carefully. 
When God says my grace is sufficient, he's also saying something else. He's also saying when tomorrow comes, that grace will still be sufficient tomorrow. So we're worried about tomorrow, today, and yet God's given us the grace today. But can I tell you, that same God who gave me that grace today will be with me tomorrow when I still face my thorn in the flesh. He'll be there tomorrow to help me. So why worry? Why? Hey, why? I like that song. Why worry? When you can pray, trust Jesus. He'll be your stay. Don't be a doubting Thomas. It's fully in his promise. Why worry, 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 worry when you can pray? And so I just go to God. And I say, God, your grace is sufficient today. And I know one thing. Because you've already been in my tomorrow. Your grace is already waiting for me for tomorrow. To face what I must face. Tomorrow. I often talk to people out of state. They say, you're in that tornado area, aren't you? I said, not where I live. It goes down to where he lives, but not where I live. They said, do you, do you get nervous? Let me tell you what I do when a tornado's coming through. It's at nighttime. I turn off the lights. I go to bed. You say, well, if the tornado comes, I'll die in my sleep. You say, aren't you worried? My life is in his hands. It's appointed that a man wants to die. If that's my appointed time, I don't care if I'm in the cellar or in the house. It's my appointed time. I'm not trying to dare God. I'm just saying, I know God's grace is sufficient. I don't know what I'm going to face. I trust the God who's given me that grace. Hey, he can help me. Now you choose whether to take pleasure in God's grace or to get bitter at the poke of the thorn that's in your life. Let me tell you some stories. This story could be said about many people, but there's one in this room who will know what this story is about. They were a little bitter and angry at God because of a family situation, preacher's kid. I found out that they, they'd visit our church, and I called them up and said, Hey, can we meet? Can we go to coffee? Went to coffee. We sat there and talked for a little bit. And I looked at them, and I said, Could you tell me your story? I knew what their story was. They didn't know I knew. I said, Can you tell me your story? They told me their story. A loved one had fallen in sin. Their heart was broken. They became bitter at the ministry. I let them tell their whole story. When they were done telling their story, I said, Now, would you let me tell you my story? They didn't know what my story was. They said, Sure. So I told them about how I grew up in a preacher's home. Everything seemed to be perfect. Crystal ball world. Went into evangelism. Crystal ball world. Until 18 years ago. When my phone rang. And my mama was on the other end of the line and saying, Son, the police just came and arrested your daddy. My crystal ball world was crumbled. That perfect little world I lived in was no longer there. Yep, I looked at that person and I said, now, my, I said, my father's been incarcerated all these years. Right. I said, I'm still serving God. Amen. God's still good. Amen. I don't hold God accountable. Right. It's just sin is sin. I can't control. He doesn't, he gives us all a free choice. I said, now, I said, now you have, I said, what's your excuse? Right. 
What's your excuse? That's what I said. What's your excuse? I said, your story. I said, at least your dad's not in prison. I said, you want to trade dads? Today, that person's serving God. Because they chose God's grace to help. They realize God's grace is sufficient. I want to tell you another story. I think of Sandy and Delma Harjo. Their little boy, Concha, six years of age, went to go play with some friends. Six, right? Someone came running to them. Your boy's face down in the swimming pool. They rushed Concha to the hospital, I believe. But he didn't make it. For the last, he's been playing on the streets of heaven. Now look at our brother Sandy and Miss Delma. And you don't know. How honored I am to have you all around here. When they could have allowed the thorn to make them bitter. I've never seen bitterness out of them. Not once. Known them for a long time. I don't know that you or your husband ever saw bitterness come out of them. What do they do? Does it still hurt? Oh, I'm sure it does. Yeah. I'm sure there's days they wonder, where, I wonder what Concha would be doing right now. Yeah. The only boy. Yeah. Now, what have they done? They've taken God's grace and said, God's grace is sufficient for me. And every day that grace has been there. And every day God's been there to help them when their heart is hurting. And every day God says, I'm here to help you in your time of need. Why? God's grace is sufficient. I want to use this dear lady right here. Mrs. O'Daniel. Lost her husband just a little over six years ago. He pastored this great church for 30-something years. But she lost him. I've watched many a preacher's wife get bitter. I have. My wife and I know, you know what I'm talking about. I've watched many a preacher's wife get bitter when they lost their husband. They throw, they look up to God and say, God, why? God, why? God, why? And may I tell you, but I've watched this dear lady day after day, week after week, year after year, put one step in front of the other and and just depended on the grace of God and has kept on going and says, thank God for the grace of God. Can I tell you, I don't know a preacher's wife who's lost their spouse that I respect more than that lady right there who has taken God's grace and said, God's grace is sufficient. I could say that about others. I think of Miss Tracy back there. I think of Miss Glenna over here. I think I, I think of, of others in this church, Miss Bonnie over here. God's grace. What could have been something to hurt? Does the hurt still come? Yes, the birthdays still come around. The anniversary still come around. The empty nights and the bed is still there. But God's grace is sufficient. I could tell you person after person. I could tell you preachers today that are bitter. They didn't like the thorn, they become bitter. I can tell you sick people who are bitter. You know, what's, you know what's sad? Here's what's sad, Brother Dorian. 
but sad is there some whose, whose thorn is just, you know, a little prick. They get a little prick. They get all bent out of shape and they leave the church and they get mad at God and get mad at the preacher and get mad at everybody and they leave and they, oh, a little prick and I'm just going to leave. I'm going to go find me another place. I'm going to go do something else. But yet there's some who are carrying the biggest load of a life and the biggest heartache of a life who say, I'm staying. I'm digging in. I'm serving God. I realize His grace is sufficient. Those are the ones who understand the coolness of the air conditioning. You can stand outside. Well, I'm not going to go in there. I'm not. I want to. I want to take it strong out here in the heat. Go ahead. I'm going inside. Huh? God's grace is sufficient. I don't know who you are. You may be a teenager. And teenagers, please know your pastor knows you carry heavy burdens. I know you do. I may not know what they are, but I want you to understand your pastor knows that your burdens are real. They're heavy. A lot of times people look down on you and they, and they criticize you, but they don't understand your burdens are real. I tell you today, God's grace is sufficient. And when you're going through the times of life, you keep on asking God's grace. Hey, young person up here. I know you're just a child to some, but man, I tell you, I know you carry heavy burdens. You carry a load that's big for you. Maybe the adult looks down and says, well, if you only understood what I carry. Well, they're not an adult yet, so they don't have to carry that. But I know you carry that burden, and I say, God's grace is sufficient. And I say through it to every adult. The grace that was great enough to save you from hell is also great enough to help you with your burden. Amen. When I go and pray often on Tuesdays, I think of the loads that some are carrying. And I say, God, can you please just help give them some extra grace today? Help them. My grace is sufficient. So you're going to let the thorn be the messenger of Satan to harass you? Are you going to say, no, nah, I want to take God's grace? Let me, let me, let me explain it this way, and I'll, and I'll be done. Probably give you another illustration and be done again. I can go to the thorny weeds and without gloves, just go ahead and let those thorns puncture my hand and pull them out. And see, the skin has been punctured and the blood dripping from the hand, or I can get God's grace and put a glove on. So I can handle you, Thorn. I just got the gloves called Jesus Christ, whose grace is sufficient. Father, you're an all-sufficient God. Oh, I'm so grateful of that. I'm so grateful, my God, that you're sufficient for us. Nothing in this old world that can be thrown on us is greater than your grace. Your grace is sufficient. It's sufficient to help me through my problems. It's sufficient for today. And it'll be sufficient for tomorrow when tomorrow comes. Heads are bowed. Eyes are